Okay, I want to show you how to repair the keys on a Technics digital piano. Um, this, is a Technics this is a Technics model PX201. Uh, it uh, has been working like a charm for 20 years or so. It has a keyboard with a dynamic uh, touch and uh, the keys um, are broken. I'll show you how in a second. Um, okay, so before you do anything on this, of course, you want to unplug uh, the power connection and make sure nobody can plug it in again. Um, and what happened is that if you look at the keys, that some of the keys, if, if, you, if you jiggle them like this, you notice they're kind of nice and firm, but some of them, like here, have gotten loose. And actually, uh, as a, in, in a second step, what has happened is that some of the keys were jammed. This has been fixed, but I'll show you how this happens uh, and how you can fix it. Okay, okay. the first thing is to open the piano. Um, this you can just take off. And then on the back side, there are two, uh, no, four, sorry, four uh, Phillips head screws like this which you have to unscrew first. Okay, so after you've unscrewed the four screws on the back, you can just slide this back in this direction a little bit, like so, and then you can lift it up to the top. Okay, here we go. You see the thing that fixed the top lid, and now you can have a look inside the piano. Okay, so now to get to the keys and to the keyboard, what we have to do next is to take off this uh, panel here, which contain, contains the main volume uh, setting and, and other switches. So this has uh, three Phillips screws. This one here, you have to be careful remembering when you put it back together that here there's a ground contact which you have to put in. Um, these are the other two screws, this one and this one. Um, and here, the, the, the only tricky thing here is that there are a lot of, there's a, there's a board here which has, as you can see, a lot of little cables. And so if you move this around, uh, there's very little space and you don't want to rip off these cables. And so actually here there was a, uh, a thing wrapped around this, which I loosened last time I opened this piano. Um, and you want to you wanna take that uh, off just so you have a little bit more space to move things around. Okay, so I've loosened these uh, three screws. This here is the spot where this ground cable was connected earlier. And now you can lift this up. You tilt this a bit to get behind this bracket here. And then one way to store this is putting it above the, these, uh, these brackets here. You have to be a bit careful because of the strong magnets and the metal piece here. If you, if you hold this here, it will bang against this loudspeaker. Uh, I've done this a couple of times, didn't have any bad effects. The thing I'm worried about most is that we rip off these cables. I don't want to have to deal with that, so I just put this on top of here and let it sit here. This panel, you can see the top of the of the individual keys here, and you can see there's actually, there are actually labels down here. There are actually labels on the, on the individual uh, keys here. And I've, I've actually marked those that have a have an issue when I opened this uh, last time with the black dot. There. Okay, so maybe just a quick overview uh, for people who are interested in, you know, not just the keyboard. Uh, so what you can see here uh, is the electronics here on the inside. Um, you can see a couple of boards, um, not touching these. And, uh, and you see a big cooling block here uh, attached to the board. Um, and what I want to do now is uh, get to the keyboard. Okay, so in, in order to ultimately, you know, get to the keys here and to be able to, to remove these keys, we have to move up this little uh, plastic piece here and slide the whole key in this direction, okay? And the problem with that is that we can't do that because it, it hits the frame here. We can't slide forward far enough, 
So that means we have to loosen the screws that hold this thing in place and push all of this back. Okay, so in order to move the keyboard, uh, you have to loosen these screws that are at the bottom here, uh, looking, looking like that. There are 10 screws like that. Uh, and once you've done that, you can shift the key. Okay, so this is no big deal. You just, again, with a Phillips screwdriver, take out these uh, 10 screws from the bottom. Okay, so now we've loosened the 10 screws that, uh, that hold this unit on the bottom. Now what we can do is we can push this back here, see? We can push this back and we get a gap here where we can stick our fingers in. Uh, and the first time I opened this I found a couple of coins and pens and stuff down there which I pulled out. Uh, now we can move this up to here, there's a screw here and this kind of hits there. Uh, if, that is, if that doesn't create enough space, you can also lift it up a little bit and push it back. Um, but I want to not move it around too much because I'm afraid to rip off these wires. Um, so I'll move it as little as possible. Okay, so I've actually already removed one key. So what, we wanna do, what you want to do if you remove a key is there's a little plastic angled piece here at the back. Okay, and you want to lift that up and push it back and I can show you here how this looks like on this key, this one key I've already taken out and we're talking about this little thing here. So you want to lift this up and then you can move all this forward, right? It actually holds in this little catch here and it's held up here as you'll see in a second. Okay, so we, we lift this up here and then I can slide this forward and then, if you look here, uh, so now I have the keyboard not far enough to the back. Oh, okay. Okay, first you un you unfix this from this little thing here, and then if you look to this side, you can push it forward, and you see here how it how it slides out. Okay, and this is the kind of room you have to create here to be able to bring this out. Okay, one more thing. Um, so before you, when you lift this out, just uh, so that you understand this and, and uh, don't lose this part, there's a little metal spring here, okay, under the key. And so this is, you can hold this here and take the key out like that and just uh, put this, this little metal key down. Okay, you can see these metal strips. I want to say that one more time because maybe I wasn't so clear about this earlier. So this is the little thing you pull up um, and then you can push this forward so it gets loose out of, out of what grabs in here and then you can push this up and a little back and then you have it here with the spring under here. And then the only place where it's still held is here and so then you push forward and slide this out. Um, so you can't really do much wrong unless, uh, as long as you're you know, not being uh, brutal and, and rip off any of these uh, plastic parts. Okay, so here now the, the mechanism is open. So this is where the key was. The key would press down on, on this here. And below this metal part, there's the counterweight that gives you the, the touch of the, of the key. Now, what has been broken here uh, are these little plastic parts here, okay? And what these plastic parts do is they sit on this metal pin and they grab in the, uh, in the key here uh, and act as a guiding uh, rail uh, for the key. And so if these are broken, then you get this effect that you can move this key around, hey here, that you can move this key around like this in contrast to one where you, where you still have the guidance, okay? And what happened here is what I found when I first opened this piano uh, the other day that these things were broken uh, and so I picked them out with, the, with tweezers but some of them, uh, some pieces got, ca got caught under the next key and so then you cannot press the key anymore and it's stuck. So you want to pull that out. Okay, actually on the left side of the keyboard this gap is, is uh, sometimes a bit bad and so 
I couldn't get the slide the key out, so I had to move the whole thing back further. And what I did is I tried to lift this not on the keys, but I tried to touch this uh, on the metal part. So I, I actually used one of these holes here where I had removed the key earlier in the middle of the keyboard and the part back here at the, the very edge from the back. And I pulled in there with, with two fingers, one finger here and one finger there. And what, that way I was able to lift it up about, I don't know, a centimeter, half an inch or so, and push it back a little bit. And so this then produced a, a gap that's wide enough to actually also slide the keys out on this side of the keyboard. Okay, so again, these are these little plastic parts that are that have, were broken, and I, I took them out last time I opened uh, our piano, uh, and that was the point where I had to stop um, because the I didn't have any spare parts. Technics doesn't produce these digital pianos anymore since quite a while, and uh, and it also doesn't sell spare parts. But there are some companies that do sell you spare parts on the internet uh, which they have taken out of old pianos and, and uh, clean them up and sell them which is great. Uh, so I, I was able to, to get uh, new parts uh, like this one uh, and you can also get other spare parts you know like these springs or like the whole uh, keys and, and other things. Okay all right, so here you can see uh, an, an old part that's still working, and here's a new one which I've uh, pushed on there. Here's another one. So it's easy, you just look how it's oriented and you push it in. It kind of locks in at the right height, but you can actually push it further down, so you may want to check if the height uh, is okay. There's another issue here. Um, the, these, uh, these little guides here are lubricated, uh, and I wasn't sure what to use. I checked on the internet. Um, I didn't find anything specifically uh, for the pianos, but I found some uh, some lubricants for um, for optical instruments, for fine optical instruments. So I hope uh, this is going to work. Um, of course, only time will tell whether the keys will be sticky in you know five or ten years down the road. Okay, so we'll you know just take some of this lubricant and. And apply a little bit. I have no good feeling for how much, but from what I found, it was just you know slightly lubricated. So now we want to put the key back in, and the first thing we do is we we push the this little spring uh, in here, and there's actually a little hole on the back side here, this slot, uh, where you can see a little piece of this uh, spring. And so you can kind of see whether you have put it in, whether it looks the same way as, as with the keys that you haven't touched. So, uh -huh. so uh, okay, that's the wrong one. Um, hang on. So we make sure this little thing at the bottom, you see this here? This is, has to fit in here. Okay, and then we uh, do this on the side here so you actually see something. So we lift this up and we, we take the... We take this key and put it on top here. And now you can look in this little notch that it's looking good. And now we go backwards, right? We slip this in, in the front here. And once we've done this, we look. you look here. There's this little notch you want to put this in. And then if you push it back, this is catching here. And here we go. Key's back in and it's not, you know, jiggling around as much as it did before. Okay, so putting all this back together is really uh, easy. You do just everything in reverse. Uh, so I've already fixed the, the screws of the keyboard assembly and the only thing I want to point out is here. There's a little hook. So if you slide this in, you go under this and push it back and then you're exactly in the right spot here and you can slip in the, the ground connector before you fix these screws. So it's again these three screws we've been uh, discussing earlier. There we go. Okay, so everything's back together. I just plugged it in uh, and hooray, it's still working. Um, so I hope this uh, can help you if you have problems with your piano. I understand that Technics actually designed the keyboards, uh, the, the key sections of the keyboards 
pretty much the same way for a wide variety uh, of models. So this may help you also when you have a, a different model than the PX201. Okay, bye.